Today we will go over what effects oversleeping will have on your polyphasic sleep schedule. The aim of this video is to help you understand why you shouldn't oversleep and how it's going to make you feel. So if that interests you, keep watching. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Crimson Flower and I'm a main author of polyphasic.net, the community recommended resource for polyphasic sleepers. So let's get on with the video. Sleeping at any time which is outside your desired sleep times for the schedule is called oversleeping or crashing. This includes falling asleep at the wrong time, micro sleeping for several to for several seconds to several minutes, uh, or falling asleep, or forgetting to fall as, uh, get up when you fall asleep for a nap or a core. Sorry. For example, if you slept at 12.15 to 13.10 and your scheduled nap time was at 13 to 13.20, that would be an oversleep of 10 minutes in the beginning of the nap and an undersleep of 10 minutes at the end of the nap. When assessing the adaptation setback of oversleeping, it's difficult, okay? It depends on several factors like how long the oversleep was, where longer oversleeps are more severe, uh, what schedule you're on, since on a lower total sleep schedule oversleeps are also going to be more uh, taxing on you, it's going to set your adaptation back more, um, what your adaptation process is like, since the further you are into adaptation the more setback your progress is going to be, um, and when the time, when the oversleep happened might also affect how your adaptation is being delayed because of it. An approximation is that oversleeping a nap is a setback of one to a few days, you know, not that bad, but still nothing you want to strive for. And having a multiple hour oversleep can be treated as a whole progress reset, so you definitely want to avoid that, if anything. So any form of oversleeping it's detrimental for a multitude of reasons uh, and results in very unhelpful consequences. Okay. For example, after a typical oversleep you are either partially cured of sleep deprivation and you end up with worse symptoms after proceeding while the adaptation is being set back. See, oversleeping infers with your body's ability to learn the schedule and will cause you to be tired at the wrong times too. It can easily become habitual uh, as your body learns that it's able to catch up on the sleep by oversleeping instead of repartitioning the sleep that it already has, which is a key point in polyphasic adaptations. It's going to see it as an alternative to gather the sleep that it's lost. Uh, this results in oversleeping or crashing frequently, which we in the community call oversleeping syndrome or OSS for shorts. It's not something you want to do and it's totally going to ruin your adaptation. It's common to feel great for a few days after oversleeping uh, because, you know, some sleep deprivation has been recovered, usually for one to five days after the oversleep, uh, following a very big energy dip crash, uh, where you risk oversleeping even more and it's even harder to stay awake. This feeling usually subsides after around a week of being on the schedule being strict again, uh, where it's replaced by the usual sleep deprivation symptoms. Also, the increase in total sleep time leads to a reduction in sleep depth and an extension of sleep cycle lengths, which reduces the enhanced sleep quality that polyphasic sleep demands from you. A common response to oversleeping is that you lose the ability to have REM sleep in your naps for a few days, which further exhausts you because you're not gaining that vital sleep that your body needs. So it's really a bad situation. You oversleep and you're going to feel poor and you're going to feel even worse because your sleep schedule isn't supportive of you. It's going to trash the sleep quality and it's absolutely not a good situation to be in, okay? In order to combat this, you need to make sure that when you have an oversleep, you're learning from it and putting all resources into making sure that you're not oversleeping again. See, getting stuck in oversleeping syndrome can result in a failure to adapt to a schedule, as I already said, because 
you will also be totally and uh, constantly plagued by sleep deprivation symptoms. So, so this is in turn going to impact your health as well. It's not something you want to get stuck in because it can lead to obesity, um, diabetes, an increased heart rate, headaches, fatigue, increased negative moods such as anger, hostility, depression, confusion, tension, and it can decrease your positive moods like vigor and happiness and so on. It's not desirable to be in in any means. Avoid it, please avoid it if possible. The solution to cure this syndrome would be to go back to a monophasic schedule and completely recover all your sleep deprivation before you start again, after you've reached homeostasis. Um, if you're interested in finding more about this, uh, we made a whole video on recovery mode, the recovery method, uh, which you can find in the description below. I highly recommend you check it out after this video. So all in all, it's important that you stick to your schedule as well as you can, as precisely as you can. Don't get extra naps, you know, when you're feeling extra tired. Just power through instead. Don't extend the core. And also don't skip sleep, because it's going to make you more tired. Stick to the schedule as well as you can, and absolutely try to avoid oversleeping. Okay, this video was very information-packed, and I hope you liked it. In the future, we'll be releasing videos on methods of how to stay awake, so you can avoid oversleeping. So if you haven't done that already, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss when we release these videos. If you have any questions regarding oversleeping, or just adhering to your sleep schedule in general, I suggest you leave them in the, in the comment section below. Alright, I'll see you in the next video. Nap well, people!